huge matchup in La Liga this weekend as Valencia host Real Madrid, Sam. Yeah, I think at the start of the season, if I'd have told you four games in, this would be first v second, you'd call me a madman, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I probably would have. I think it's a, a reasonable shout. But Valencia, under Jose Bordelas, have started like a well, team possessed, basically. They're a plus seven goal difference, unbeaten, 10 points after four games. They feel like a really special side. And look, Bordelas has put them out in the Bordelas style, right? They have adopted his 4-4-2 that he used to such effect at Hetafe. And they have just become a gritty, hard to beat side. But they have more talent than his Hetafe side had. And what we're seeing in that is them scoring quite a lot of goals. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of key players here that are actually performing. I am a little bit sceptical as to how far this can continue. And I must say, the penalty they were given against Granada in game week two <laughs> was not a penalty. Not bitter. And they should have a loss to their name. They should have nine points, not ten. They shouldn't be <laughs> safe. shouldn't be in second place. But hey, they started fast. And we look at the La Liga table at the start of the season. You've got your kind of your, your big three. You expect Sevilla to be mixing in and there. And then you start to look at right, who's that fifth team? Who's that fifth team that can sort of vault themselves into this position? I don't think that many people would have picked Valencia at the start of the season, but look at what they've done. 10 points on the board already is a hell of a start, although biggest test of the season by far this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I just think they're incredibly functional, Dean. And, and you go across to Real Madrid, who have started well as well, but also look a little bit susceptible, right? They've obviously kept one clean sheet midweek against Inter Milan, which is an impressive result at the San Siro. They kept a clean sheet against Real Betis. But apart from that, they have conceded goals. And it does look that you can get at this kind of new look defensive line for Real Madrid. There are still holes to be got out here. And in a, in a kind of different way to Valencia, Real Madrid have suddenly almost reinvented themselves as the entertainers of this division. Yeah, and they've also got a depth to them now where you, Ancelotti is able to look at his subs bench and make changes that are genuinely going to impact the game and not only impact it, but impact it quickly. And I think, obviously, we saw um, Rodrigo score that goal in the Champions League. But for me, Camavinga, the way that he's started has been outstanding. I mean, he played 24 minutes against Celta Vigo on his debut, scored, and then he comes on in the Champions League for the final 10 minutes and he assists for the winner and is also getting a really good understanding quickly with players like Valverde and the runs off the ball that he's making. Like, this guy is absolutely built for this level of football. Mm. You wonder, like, I wonder how long it'll take him to adjust going from Rennes to Real Madrid. Five well, it's taken him Five. 34 <laughs> minutes because he's already got <laughs> goal and assist to his name and he's there and you could start him in this game and he'll be absolutely fine. So, yeah, I do think that, like you say, they are the entertainers. They're definitely more open now than they have been in past seasons. Not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe this is what they needed. Oh, yeah, it's what we needed to see. It was quite joyful. Real Madrid it? under Zidane by the end were relentlessly boring, weren't they? The way they, they closed... were good, but they were boring. oh, they were very good, but they were relentlessly boring. Yeah, it wasn't relentlessly watch. boring. And like, look, we pick out Camavinga there, and Vinicius Junior is another storyline coming forward. He's finally found that finishing touch, that just a smidge of composure in front of goal. All of a sudden, that immense talent that he has in his feet is starting to be converted into goals. Four goals already in 222 minutes. Obviously, Karim Benzema is uh, still leading the charge, isn't he? Five goals, four assists in four games. It's Come on, Karim. He's a joke. He's a joke. He's that good. Yeah. Um, I'm excited, though, about the, this matchup. I'm excited about how it pans out. And something I've been quite intrigued by with, with Bordelas' Valencia is this kind of double pivot they're playing in the middle with Daniel Vass, who's often deployed at right back, yep. playing as a centre defensive midfielder, alongside Hugo Guillamon, who is a centre back. So basically, they've got a right back and a centre back in the central midfield pivot. And in front of them, they're letting Soler sort of flow out on the right hand side in the kind of free roll and Cheryshev on the other side playing as a kind of more traditional winger. Now, the fullbacks, Jose Gaia and Thierry Correa, are flying. Yeah, they really are good. absolutely flying forwards. And it's given this side a little bit of, of depth. And I think maybe that's the key, right? Having Vass there in the middle means that he can drop in into that right back spot if Thierry Correa goes absolutely flying down that right hand side. And, and outside Soler, who's more likely to, to pick up that kind of interior space. Um, but Vass goes forward the other way, he's scored already this season, and he's getting in there and getting amongst it. And in Maxi Gomez and Gonzalo, and Gonzalo Guedes, there's two very, very talented footballers who are both capable of scoring goals in very different ways. And Gedge is the kind of, well, free spirit, right? He's the, he's the roaming 10 of the, of the two in a front two, if you will. Mm. And, and Gomez is a much more traditional nine. But as a kind of combination, this is all working quite nicely. It all fits together in a way that I was a little bit surprised. But when you talk it through, yeah, it makes plenty of sense. I mean, all of the players that you've mentioned, I believe, were there last season. I don't think there's a single new signing in that list of players you've just created. Yeah, Mamad so, Ashvili is obviously came in in the summer to play goal. No, but the players you mentioned, yeah, this, this yeah, sort yeah. of this, this style they're playing, they're all 
they all they're all holdovers from last. So what were they doing last season? Well, ha- Javi Gracia, what were you doing? <laughs> well, that's a different question. You're being put to shame, my yeah. friend. By he, Jose Bordelas. Well, I wouldn't mind, but Javi Gracia plays a 4-4-2. <laughs> so it's not that's even a... like they switch formations. Um, but, you know, you look at how, how this is like. We knew Bordelas was a good manager, right? He, he had his Detafe side playing as more than the sum of their parts. Mm-hmm. And he has taken that to Valencia and we were like, okay, how is this going to work with a team that has more talent and is probably less likely to, to go to war for you? But he has them going to war for him already. And I think Valencia are going to be a bit of a problem this season, not in terms of challenging for titles. I think this position that they're currently in in the table is slightly false. As you say, they're not going to finish second. But I do think they are going to be in this conversation for fifth alongside the likes of Real Betis, alongside the likes of Real Sociedad, alongside Villarreal, who obviously won the Europa League this season. These are good sides. Oh, yeah. And Valencia are now firmly in this conversation for the first time in a while. Well, we get to check that, don't we? There's a nice barometer this weekend. Real Madrid, tough one.